A new development in the Halo Infinite switching engines story that seems to actually make a bit more sense to what we're currently hearing right now. Incredible leaker Jez Corden regrets making his article about this topic. So do you want to know more? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So Bathrobe Spartan is a rather credible leaker, leaked out a bunch of maps that are actually coming to the game that have been confirmed. You tweet out this long thread about everything about the slow space engine and why is it people getting this rumor thread switching and things like that. It is in French, but he's a credible leaker and I was able to translate this all for you guys. So I wanted to break it all down and kind of talk about why he thinks that maybe not exactly the, is the case of Halo Infinite switching engines, but maybe other games or other experiences using different engines. If you guys like these news type of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let us know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel. It literally is like the best way to help out the channel. Now to start the thread off, he does cite his sources saying that they are people who have been involved with the creation side of Halo. Now obviously keep them anonymous because you know, obviously got their name out there, kind of hurt their name within the gaming industry. So it's really kind of crucial information to share with you guys here. So the first thing is he wants to talk about is Faber. Faber is their creation tool, kind of named off of the lore of Halo, where Faber was the person who created the Halo ring, so that would make sense. It does say that it is a very powerful tool. You can do a lot of awesome things with it, which we've seen videos of this as well. Though he does mention that it crashes rather easily, which can be a real pain. It also requires a lot of cross beam support solutions, meaning that if you want to create this thing in favor, you need to make something else behind underneath it to help support it. But then if you want to change that thing that you created, you have to go back in and double up. So basically doubling up the work. So this cross beam and the content you want to create are interconnected. So if you want to change the thing that you created, you got to change that and the cross beam supports tool. So that's why things can be a bit tricky. But when this program does crash, it can do it quite often as about like a 75% chance of actually crashing, which is quite awful. And so in case of a crash, loading assets could take hours. Even sites developers taking lunch breaks while their scene loads up so they can actually do some creation. Artists would lose hours of work on a crash and he does cite that this is a actual experience that one of their sources actually had. This really could explain why it's been taking so long for the content to come out for Halo Infinite. We're, I mean, we're going to be at like a year and a half into the game's release and we'll finally get like some new sandbox items and a couple new map, actual like dev made new maps. Kind of crazy but there is sunlight on the horizon here saying that his sources say that Faber, as of today, is a much more stable and faster tool. A lot of info has been going around, a lot of speculation saying that it's been slow space engine is a big reason why there's been this slow drip of content. I mean, it sounds like it was previously, but I think things are kind of getting up to speed now for what they need for the game as well as Chris Lee apparently misleading management saying that the game is further ahead in development than it actually was making sure to get the engine out just to get the game out leaves the engine in a lot of tech debt so then they have to go back and fix the engine before they can create any content that does kind of seem to fit the narrative but right now as they're saying that it's not an issue of technology but more of an issue of manpower with a lot of departures that we've been talking about with halo infinite if you guys know like that multiplayer overview video all those people in that video are basically not there anymore like all the leadership positions are gone they've all left and also there's a current Microsoft wide hiring freeze because they're anticipating a recession coming around very soon. So they're not quite sure what's going on. And then also that means that 343's hands are tied and they have to try to make do with what they have. I covered this topic specifically in a different video. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it at the end of this video. But according to Bathrobe Spartans, sources saying that Slip Space Engine and Faber are quite awesome tools saying that their source is actually quite surprised where all these rumors actually came from. Now with the winter update, less than a month away right now, guys, we have Forge launching and Forge actually has some really great creation tools within it. And that is because of Faber, their tool of creation when it comes to the engine. Saying many of Faber's tools are actually directly ported into Forge. And that's why you're able to create such crazy things within Forge. Like the prefab system is an import from Faber as well. And the prefab system is an important feature within Faber. So then they can actually create content faster without having to remake the whole thing all over again. 
So then it would be insane to then release Forge and then soon after that, relatively soon in development terms, switch to a completely different engine. That just wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. And that's why it's been such crazy news that's been going on. Cause like everyone's like, this doesn't make sense, but you're saying it. this is what's happening. This is why this has become a news story. Though there does seem to be a logical explanation why this new engine rumor has been going around. Bathroom Spartan's source says that there is a small internal team at 343 working on new experiences for Halo. New experiences as in the exploration of new avenues to continue the adventures of Master Chief, but also other projects are in the research and development phase as in the kind of planning out, seeing what's feasible kind of stuff. And for these new experiences, according to their source, says that they are indeed evaluating whether that slipspace can meet their needs and for what they need to do for this new experience. This could be something that they could switch to Unreal, they could switch to Unity, because it could possibly be like a virtual reality augmented into reality kind of experience which we haven't really seen halo dive too much into and i think there certainly is space for that kind of stuff to happen but they do mention here also that slip space is specifically designed for halo if you guys don't know it's not like a completely new engine from the ground up right they went down to the foundation and built on top of that which the foundation being the blam engine which has been the engine for halo well, forever. They didn't want to mess with the feel or the physics of what that engine provides for them. So what they did is they basically kind of reworked it in a way to hopefully make content a little bit faster and have better pipelines as the engine of Blam has been notoriously known as one being difficult to work in and poorly documented. So if you switch to say Unreal for Halo Infinite, then you would completely change the feel, the movement, the mechanics, the gravity and the feel of Halo essentially when you're playing the game no other game plays or feels like Halo because it has its own engine it has its own mechanics that if you try to switch up to a different engine it would be really difficult to replicate those minute little differences and slip space is specifically designed to cater to those needs for Halo and Halo Infinite specifically their source even mentions if they tried making like a Halo Wars 3 in slip space that wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense to them which again to me this does make a bit more sense we've seen other game companies trying to do this previously right with say like mass effect andromeda they tried to use the frostbite engine because ea kind of forced them to go off of the unreal engine for mass effect and then switch over to frostbite and then a lot of developers after the release of andromeda cited that the that switch to frostbite was really difficult as frostbite is not really designed for anything else besides battlefield plus switching over the unreal engine for halo if it means that microsoft would have to pay licensing fees and a hefty licensing fee as well on top of that and i'm pretty sure that microsoft would rather prefer 343 to stay on their proprietary engine and then just keep work on Halo that way rather than having to make you know a whole new switch delay content even more and then have to pay licensing fees it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me but now hearing this information that 343 is currently working on new experiences where they're evaluating if slow space could be an engine that they could use or use something else then yeah, I think I can understand where these rumors are coming from. We've been hearing a lot of dots being connected about Halo The Endless and how that could be the new campaign or something like that that'd be going either into Infinite or being its own standalone game. We just kind of have to wait and see how that really plays out. But of course, once I get some more information on that, you know, I'll share with you guys here on the channel. And to tie in with all this news that we're having for Bathrow Spartan about the slip space engine, Halo Infinite situation and stuff like that, Jez Corden, who's one of the credible leakers within Microsoft kind of news and info guy, recently went on this podcast and I was definitely looking forward to this because he wrote up a whole article about this whole thing. And then this was him actually time to actually explain his thought process and how he feels about it. And Ultimately, Jez Corden says he regrets writing that article. Jez said he even broke his one rule when it comes to creating news and information and leaks in the information about games that he waits till he has some concrete evidence, either a document, an image, or something like that. And this time, he kind of foregoed that to create this article that we covered previously on the channel here guys if you want to check out that video again linked at the end of this video here now jess said he's feeling more 50 50 about the whole thing if halo infinite is actually switching engines jess said that his sources were being a little bit more coy than they normally are normally they're very straightforward with him where other sources even said yes they are switching engines which is quite different and also contrary which is very weird he heard that tatanka the rumored Battle Royale like mode for Halo Infinite is switching to Unreal, but then he also heard and has seen Tatanka build being shipped on Slipspace Engine, which is 
quite weird and very contradicting, which is something that, you know, obviously leads things to be a little bit more murky and a little bit more unknown. This is kind of the nature of leaked information here, guys, because you have to go off people's, you know, good words and stuff like that. Now, this is an important context for you guys here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video are thinking like, well, Sean W. said this from his sources. And Jez even talks about this in the podcast saying that he believes that Sean W.'s sources believe in what they're saying. But Jez says that Sean W.'s sources might not be getting it quite right, which is interesting coming from Jez because he's actually talked with Sean W. Sean W. and him shared resources sources and information and that's where Jess started to think like so this is actually happening so there's there's something there we don't know quite what is actually happening i don't think their sources even quite know what's happening either we just know that there's something more happening in the background of halo infinite than we are privileged to information about i kind of like to use the analogy of like a black hole where if you're observing a black hole you actually can't see them because well nothing leaves a black hole not even light and so then how do you observe a black hole the effects that it has around the surrounding areas so if you see a bunch of stars orbiting a blank point in space most likely there's a black hole and I feel like there's a good analogy here when it comes to Halo Infinite that we're seeing a lot of things moving around, changing and shifting, but we don't really see the reason why. So 343 just needs to tell us what that black hole is. An interesting thing here that I was quite confused what Jez said as well within the podcast saying that one that Halo Infinite uses the Unreal for its UI because they shit with no tools when it comes to slip space and confirming this with other sources that no, there is no Unreal Engine being used within Halo Infinite. There is with MCC and maybe Jez is getting his wires crossed when it comes to something like that. I've heard nothing about Unreal Engine being within Halo Infinite. And Jez repeated multiple times that Slip Space Engine launched with no tools, but then we literally have seen the tools of Faber, which we were just talking about earlier in this video, and the one tool that they have within 343, which caused a whole lot of issues was the Bonobo tool. If you guys remember that drama that happened on Juneteenth, yeah, that was real awkward. Ultimate I think this all just kind of ties into the nature of leaked information. It can have stuff that's lost in translation, things that are kind of half-truths, things that are kind of not true at all. Main thing with leaks is that you want to recognize patterns and things that just kind of continuously keep happening with this information. Now this is a developing story and Bathrobe Spartan actually has more information to share with us as well, which I will definitely cover on the channel as soon as that information does go live. If you want to know information about this article that Jez Corden wrote about, Check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.